everyone. Today we are making blueberry and cream cookies. I created this recipe for my sister because she's homebound so I wanted to make a special treat just for her and she loves blueberry anything. So I've read a lot of cookbooks over the years and I've compiled helpful little tips here and there that I use when creating a recipe. So I wanted to show you the ingredients we will be using here. Some of them are unique because I've learned that certain ingredients make a big difference in the quality of the cookie. I'll elaborate more on that as we go. Also, this is the first time I'm using these cream cheese chips. They are so good. I've given samples of these cookies to a few of their family members since I filmed this video, and a couple have said it's literally the best cookie they've ever had. That surprised me a little because I make a lot of different original recipe cookies and this is their favorite over all the others. So I'm excited to share this with you. Let's get started. Okay, so we need two and a quarter cups of flour. You can use all purpose flour, but I find the cookies turn out much better if you use bread flour and I love King Arthur bread flour. It can be expensive depending on the store, but I find it on sale a lot of times at my local Myers um, for $3.99 for this five pound bag. Normally it's $5.99. And if you order it online with them, it's even more expensive. So I would say every month or two, this goes on sale if, if you have a Myers near you. But we need two and a quarter cups of this, and I use this because it gives more substance to the cookie, and it's, it gives it some chew and some bite, so it really works really well for a cookie. So we get some flour, two and a quarter cups, measured out here. Okay, to the flour we're going to add a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to use a little less than one teaspoon because my butter has salt in it. And one teaspoon of baking soda. to whisk this together for a minute or a few seconds and set it aside okay. okay so we're gonna put our two sticks of softened butter in so here's the butter that I use, and it doesn't matter what brand it is, but you want the European style because, as you see, it has 82% butter fat, and this makes a difference in your cookie. It will make a much better cookie. Um, I think regular butter only has 80 or 81%, um, just that small. Uh, difference makes your cookie much better. This butter is more expensive, but again, I buy it when it's on sale and I put it in the freezer. So two sticks of this butter into the mixer bowl. There's a lot of butter left on here, so I'm going to scrape this off and get it in the bowl because it's a little bit too much to just let it go. Now I'm going to do the other one. Oh yeah, that's a whole tablespoon right there. 
Okay, so get this whisk on, or not whisk, but paddle. And we want to paddle this for a minute, uh, approximately a minute. Okay, that's good. This butter was actually extremely soft. Um, so now we're going to put the sugars in. So half a cup of brown sugar. And let's see, a half a cup of regular white granulated sugar. And then um, instead of vanilla extract, because this is blueberries and cream cookies, I'm using blueberry extract. And I got this at, I don't know if you can see it, but it says the Baker's Kitchen. This is a, a bakery and a kitchen, Baker's Kitchen store in Toledo, Ohio. I live in Michigan, but it's not too terribly far from me. So I go there. I could not find blueberry extract in any stores near me or even on Amazon. So. They had it and I was really happy about that. So I'm going to use that instead of vanilla extract. I'm going to use about a teaspoon and a half just because I want to. <laughs> okay. So now we can start mixing this again. Okay, we're going to scrape it down real quick. All right. We're going to, we scraped it down. I'm going to add one egg. Now we're going to add the other egg. Ooh, it has a nice blueberry smell. And let that whip up for a couple minutes. Getting nice and fluffy. I'm going to scrape the sides and heat it for another 30 seconds.
Okay, everything is mixed well, and it's all, the batter is super light and fluffy. And we're going to start um, adding the flour mixture, just maybe in three different sections or parts. So there's some, and I like to barely, like, pulse it so it absorbs some of that flour so it doesn't fly out on me. And you don't want to mix it a lot at this point because now that the flour is in there, you don't want to, if you mix it too much, you're going to start developing gluten. Okay, so another third of the flour. So just so it's mixed in and you don't really see the flour anymore. Okay. Now. Now it's the fun part. You get to mix in the blueberries. So these are dried blueberries. From Whole Foods I got these. It's an eight ounce bag. They have to be dried. They won't turn out if you use fresh blueberries, of course. And then these are Hershey's cream cheese flavored chips. So I tried making these blueberry and cream cookies before um, with the white chocolate chips. But this is something that I never saw before until recently. And I thought, wow, that's going to be good with a blueberry and cream cookie instead of the white chocolate. Um, so the white chocolate, I think, is a lot sweeter than these. And I'm actually making these for my sister. And I used a little less sugar than normal. And I think with a little less sugar in these, that this is going to taste really good. So now is the time to put those in and we're just going to mix it long enough for to, to basically stir it. So it should only take seconds to stir in the, the blueberries and the chips. Alrighty. more. Yeah, they smell like cream cheese. So what we're going to do next is spoon, so use an ice cream scoop, and we're going to scoop this out onto a cookie sheet and put them in the refrigerator till overnight. And I have found that these will not turn out as, as good if you don't chill them overnight. I tried chilling them for about four hours, but again, 
when you do it overnight, the cookie is a little thicker and chewier and it just holds well. And so that's what I do now. Um, and when you scoop them with an ice cream scoop, you want to do it like golf ball size. So I'll show you that in just a minute. Okay, so I don't know what size it is, but it's a probably a golf ball size. So you want to, you really want a ball. So make it a heaping and then do it just like that. Now, you don't want to push down on these even after we chill them and we pull them out of the refrigerator to bake them. Leave them in a ball. Okay, so you want to take saran wrap and loosely lay it over the cookies while they chill in the fridge. You don't want to pull it tight because you don't want to smash them down, but just loosely and then put them in the fridge to chill overnight and tomorrow when I pull these out to bake them, we're going to put them on a different cookie sheet where we can space them apart because of course they can't bake this close together. They're too big. So we'll be back tomorrow, but for you it'll be just one second. Okay, it's the next morning and got these out of the refrigerator. They're pretty solid, nice and cold. So we're going to put them on a cookie sheet and we're going to get them in the oven while they're actually still cold. Let's get these baked up and see how they turn out. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so these just came out of the oven. It's been 14 minutes on 375. And if you look real close there, you can see little pieces on top just starting to turn brown and maybe around the bottom edge. That's when you want to take them out, but 14 minutes is what, in my oven, what it worked out to. I'm going to let them cool for five minutes and then move them over to this cooling rack. So we'll be back in five minutes. Okay, it's been five minutes. I've got another batch in the oven and I've got the uh, last cookie sheet in the fridge because you want to keep this dough chilled until it actually goes in the oven. And that's how they're going to turn out nice and see how thick that is. It's going to be good. Okay, let those cool for a few minutes and then we'll break one open and see what it looks like. Okay, we just had a batch come out of the oven. We're going to... Take one of these now. Actually, it's nice and cool. It smells so good. I'm going to break one open. Let you look inside. Wow, look at that. Wow. These are so good, you guys. I use cream cheese chips instead of the white chocolate chips, and it's really, really good. And with the blueberry extract, you can really taste the blueberry. And it's not an overly sweet cookie, which is exactly what my sister wanted. So I hope you like these, Carol. I mean, look at that. And I also wanted to mention a lot of people might have all-purpose flour or baking soda in their kitchen. If you don't bake a lot, check the expiration dates because 
that makes a big difference in your baking. If your flour or your baking soda or any of your ingredients are expired, it can really make your recipe not come out good. So give those a check too. If it's a flavor that you like and you bake these, please leave me a comment and let me know. I'd really appreciate it. Please like and subscribe if you found this video good or useful. It'll really help my channel and I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Okay, I've got these all packaged up for my sister. I'm going to get ready here and leave and go and deliver them on her doorstep. I know she's going to love them. Okay, I'm delivering these to my sister's house. I'm just going to put them on, hang them on the doorknob. I'm going to call her husband and let him know they're there so he can get them off the door for her. This is the end of my video where I take a moment to talk about a retro item from my kitchen. And today I will mention this plate that I used in my video. It is Hazel Atlas Company and it's from the 50s and I'm partial to the 50s because my parents were married in the 50s and I just love that era and on the back you can see here well you can barely see it but there's an H and an A for Hazel Atlas and I think this is called the utensils pattern or something to that effect but it's so 1950s retro looking, I just love it. And I love the turquoise color. And I only have one, but that's enough for me for a decoration or to serve a special item with. So that's it. Everyone have a great day. Bye.